In today's episode, I speak to Tyler McCune about how to sell the relationship and not the product. This provides a better likelihood for success. Tyler believes in the daily email as a method of connecting with your prospects. The more contact you have with your list, the more likely they will turn to you when you need something. Contact can include other things than an email. The goal here is to connect as often as possible with things that are interesting and useful. Stay tuned to the rest of the conversation and discover the special offer Tyler has for listeners of the Maverick Paradox podcast. Before we begin our conversation, here is a quick shout out to the Pathologically Curious. Check out the Maverick Paradox magazine. It's a digital magazine written by Mavericks for business owners and professionals. You can find the magazine at the maverickparadox.com. The magazine's aim is to provoke maverick leadership everywhere. Welcome to the Maverick Paradox podcast, where we explore what it is to be a maverick and discover effective modes of leadership. I am Judith Germain, and my mission is to propel the maverick mindset into a world where character and integrity will ultimately have a higher premium than personality and bureaucracy. So thank you for joining me on this journey. If you would like to continue with me, then please subscribe to my podcast on iTunes, Stitcher or one of the other popular podcast platforms. And today our guest is Tyler McCune. Hi Tyler. Hi Judith. Thanks for having me. And thanks for coming along. Um, I'm really interested in our conversation, but before we start, tell listeners about you. Okay, so I'm an email copywriter. Um, I work with, you know, I've, I've written and consulted for clients in a variety of industries, both online and brick and mortar, um, delivering different types of copy and, and consulting. And most recently, I've really niched down to just focus on email primarily. In addition to that, I, I wrote a book, Email Emperor, which is basically my, my copywriting system for writing emails quickly and easily that people love not only to buy from, but to read as well. And um, yeah, that's that's mostly me. As for my spare time, I like to hang out with my dog, go on hikes. I live in Southern California, so it's usually sunny here. Um, <laughs> do, do handstands and, and stuff like that. See, that's enough to make me jealous already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, that sounds cool. Um, I know one of the things that you talk about in the, in the past has been around books and how books can position someone to be a leader almost straight away. Um, how does that work? Yeah, so I'm actually not too sure, like, the psychology behind it. I'm sure mm-hmm. someone could speak to that a lot um, deeper than I can. But it's just really been my observation. So what was really fascinating for me is, you know, I, I write a daily email. I write articles. Um, sometimes I'll write five articles a week. So I'm always doing writing for myself, for my clients. And so I've, I've written many books in my lifetime. I was also an, an English major and I've always loved writing. So I've written probably dozens and dozens of books. But for some reason, when you capture that all together and you publish it, and uh, for myself, I just self-published on Amazon. You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to convince anyone. You don't have to do anything special. But for some reason, people just start taking you seriously. So I've seen this with clients. Um, clients have reached out and be like, oh, wow, I saw you wrote a book. Like, I, I really can't wait to read it. Um, like, my sister was, like, super stoked by family. So um, I just, you know, I think when everyone has so much of a platform, whether it's a blog, um, you know, no insults you, but a podcast, um, whatever it is, it's, it's so easy to get started. For some reason, books feel to people like they're a little bit harder to break into. So it really uh it positions you as an expert so does that mean it doesn't matter what the book's about or how good it is is that what you mean oh absolutely not i mean so um (laughs) there's this idea in marketing that you know being effective doesn't matter on the front end necessarily so like for someone to buy your first product you could just totally you know bs them into it but it's the same thing like someone could be like oh wow tyler has a book i'm going to join his list but if the book sucks if um, you know, my emails aren't good, then people are going to tune out very, very quickly. So I would say, yeah, if you're not actually, you know, knowledgeable in what you do and you can't write a good book, then you're not going to like just fake it. But 
if you are knowledgeable in, in what you do and you already write and speak a lot about it, then I think it is really, really smart to put it all together and, and self-publish it on Amazon or, you know, go the more traditional publishing route if that interests you. Okay, I feel a bit more relieved now. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> what it is is that so many people talk about, oh, you can write your book in 24 hours and then you see, and then they, in the promo it says, things like it doesn't really matter what it's about and hmm. you just can just get together like 10 top tips for this and you just think but that sounds like the book's going to be really shallow yeah I, I don't believe in like check the box kind of a mentality which that's what it sounds like but I do think you can write a book quickly um, I know there's a service that's it's pretty expensive like like a few thousand dollars I think it's called 24 hour author and mm -hmm. they basically interview you and then take your transcription and turn it into a book. So there are ways to, to write books very quickly. Um, like for myself, I wrote my book really quickly, but part of it is that I write every day, so I'm a fast writer. I have a mm. lot of articles that I can pull to, to read content. So if, if you or any of your listeners, you know, if they've written a hundred or hundreds of articles in their, their career, they can just, you know, compile some of those articles on similar topics and, and have a book, you know, pretty much overnight. But yeah, obviously, I, I don't believe in putting out um, bad work, but, you know, it doesn't. It also doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, I mean, the the idea, I guess, of dictating, you know, somebody interviewing you and then writing it for you makes sense because you can tend to speak quicker than writing, I guess. Mm -hmm. in and I think I found that when I get interviewed – by people I come up with stuff that I hadn't really considered before just because of the, the type of questions that they've asked so that makes sense um, and I certainly know that from the book that I wrote it was done relatively quickly three months to write um, but certainly it, it wasn't one of those here's 20 tips and let me gonna <laughs> and there's 20 chapters per tips or, and then I'm gonna stretch it out as much as possible yeah. <laughs> but that one of the things that you said that I find quite curious, you talked about a daily email and my thoughts are how do you make it that an email interesting and how do you capture the attention every day? Right. So it's, it's really about understanding your, <clears throat> your audience and your readers. So if you know what people's problems are, what sorts of challenges they're going through day to day, you know, their, their hot points, um, what they're interested in, it's it's really not that difficult to come up with interesting topics. So it's kind of like, uh, I, I'd like to talk about it like in the terms of a first date. So, you know, what did your mom or your dad, you know, what, what, did, what was the, the advice you got when you went on a first date? It was probably ask lots of questions and be yeah. yourself. And um, I mean, I'm not saying you should just ask questions in your emails, but the reason that you ask questions is because it gets people talking about themselves. It gets in their world, which is um, Jim Camp is like the world's best negotiator. He's passed away now, but he would always talk about being in your prospect's world. If you're in their world, you're always safe. So if you, so if people who struggle to connect with their audience, um, whether it's daily, weekly or whatever, it's really not a copywriting problem or like a creative problem. It's really an understanding your, your market problem. Hmm. Because I, I find myself on lists. Um, because I certainly hadn't chosen to put me on there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, some, some of those lists are daily emails. And maybe for the first three or four days, it's okay. And then after that, it's just, especially now, where there is, you know, with the COVID-19, it's kind of bizarre in a way, because I found it's given me less time, mm -hmm. the more time that even if I was going to open them in the past, I don't have, I just don't have the time to open them now. So how, how does somebody convince? So what would you, what would you do to make me open your email every day and actually look forward to the next one? Um, well, first of all, I might not want you on my list. I don't, I don't mean <laughs> that, that personally or insulting, but I think a big part of it is, you want to curate your list. You want people yeah. on your list who are actively interested in what you're teaching. Uh, you know, a, a good match for your personality, obviously you should um, kind of cater your personality to your market always. 
but you want people who are actively interested and actually buyers in your market. So that's the first thing is, um, you know, if, if you get on someone's daily email list and it's boring to you, maybe you're just not their ideal prospect. Um, another thing is, again, it all starts at the opt-in. So I'm very clear with people, you're going to get daily emails. They're going to be promotional messages. I'm going to have something to buy in those emails. And um, I actually try to turn people away at the opt-in. I, I don't necessarily make huge promises like other people, like, you know, triple your income overnight, because then you do have people who just opt in who don't really want to, to spend time with you every day. Um, and another thing, and this is what no one wants to hear, but it's the simplest and truest advice is you just have to write subject lines and emails that people want to read and want to buy from. So most people's problems, you know, they, they do all these things with deliverability and try to get, you know, trick people into opening their emails and stuff. But really it comes down to, are you writing things people are interested in and help their life? I call it interesting and useful. And are you you know, selling them offers that they're interested in and that help their life. If you're not doing those two things, then yeah, you're kind of screwed. But if you're doing those two things, then you shouldn't really have too big of a problem getting engagement. And the last point I'll say on this is I'm on, I'm on quite a few daily email lists or people who send, you know, um, five to 10 emails a week. And it's not like I read every single one of their emails. But the fact that they're showing up and I have a specific email I get newsletters on so it doesn't clog up like my, my business email. But like, even though I don't read every single one of their emails, I'm reading way more emails from them than I am from the people who only mail once a week or once every couple of weeks. And I've had it all the time where I sign up for someone's list. And then a month later, they email me and I'm like, dude, I don't even remember you. And so I unsubscribe. So it's not like every single person is going to read every single one of your emails but they are going to have more contact with you. They're going to see your, your name more, which builds likability and, and yeah. Well, now I find that really curious because it sounds weird to me um, in the sense that you're, that you're having, you're suggesting that you should email free, frequently, many times a week. Cause that sounds like a, that sounds a lot. So, so, I don't know whether that's just because I'm weirdly old school, which is a very frightening prospect for me. Because um, <laughs> I would have thought once a month seems like enough time, but that doesn't sound like what you're saying. Um, yeah, once a month to me is is way too little. I would say once a week is sort of like the minimum, I would suggest. Right. Obviously, everyone's goals. And I mean, if you hate writing emails... But I think just the thing is, is that you should have very frequent contact with your audience because, you know, if, if, if you're looking for a car and you have a car salesman who constantly is like sending you like, hey, look at this deal. Hey, did you know you could clean your car this way? Hey, here's a quick engine tip. You're going to go to that guy instead of the guy who calls you once a month and says, hey, I have something for sale. So really, the more you can have contact with your audience, whether it's, you know, live streams or direct mail is really good apps are starting to become more popular for businesses, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be email. I think email is probably the best um, channel right now, but it's really just about having regular contact with your audience. So, so you, how, do you, you do this podcast like once a week or how, how often are you releasing? Uh, once a week. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I mean, some people do daily podcasts, but you're, you're having regular contact with your audience. It's not necessarily over email, which I think is a much better conversion platform than podcasts in many ways. But just the fact that you're showing up week after week, um, that consistency is huge. They're getting to know you just by listening to you. You know, a lot of time, I bet a lot of your listeners feel like they're your friends mm. and uh, maybe even have conversations with you in their head. Like, you know, Judith, I was having this problem. Like, what do you think about it? So, um, and actually this is a re really interesting point that it sort of made me understand this, this whole email or contact daily sort of thing is um, I forget what the name of it is, but there's this idea that people form bonds with celebrities and they actually feel like they're friends with the celebrities to the yeah. point where they, they try to please the celebrities and actually change their like habits to please those celebrities. Wow. It sounds like borderline manipulative and almost like abusive relationship, which it is if you, you know, you do it wrong and you sell a scammy product. But the thing is, is that when you show up all the time, you start to build a bond with people that is more like a friendship. And that bond is way more uh, valuable to your business than any one-time sale could ever be. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. It reminded me of some, I was, um, a few years ago, I was a regular columnist in an um, industry 
trade magazine and they had a conference and I turned up at the conference and it was like I was a celebrity. These people, everybody kept stopping me and asking me how I was. And it was really weird. And then I suddenly realised that, oh, they think they know me. Because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were like, yeah. talking to me as if I was their best buddy. And it was like, I have never met you. And <laughs> why are you? They're like, hi, how are you doing, Jude? What are you up to? And I was like, this is a bit strange. And then I thought, it's because that, I can't remember if it was every week now that you'd see like my picture and it was one of those columns where people would write in for advice mm. so I think it was just like oh yeah, yeah I recognize you as opposed to jury <laughs> it was a bit weird that makes sense so what you're suggesting is that regular contact with your potential client base is obviously best when you're in their inbox and they're reading it but the fact that you are doing other things on a regular basis is useful. So, for example, I have a, a digital magazine called Maverick Paradox Magazine, which is um, publishing every day. Mm, okay. Um, and then, you, and of course, there's this podcast that's every week. So that kind of – and I do a monthly, so I feel bad now. I only do a monthly newsletter. Now I feel like I ought to be doing it more now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you think – is that what you mean by having a kind of – rounded thing or do you think you should just stick to one like just get a big mailing list and stick to that yeah i mean i think it's absolutely up to your goal so i think the most i mean dan kennedy who's a huge in the marketing world he has a saying that the most dangerous number is one so if you only had an email subscriber list you're probably hurting yourself you, you really do want to be building up different lists, a direct mail list, um, you know, if you have a podcast or whatever it is that you are good at and you enjoy, I think you should be building up your audiences there. But the danger with, um, I'm not, I don't know too much about the digital magazine and how it's delivered, but like the danger of having a podcast and going all in on the podcast is iTunes could deplatform you at any time, like, or they could change their algorithm and your listens could go down. Like you really don't have any control. So if you used your podcast to, to put people on your email list, then you own that list. I mean, you could, like I have Aweber. And I, so even if Aweber deplatformed me, I can back up my list and then plug it into whatever other um, you know, broadcast system I want. So I, I, I don't think that you should only do email. Um, I think you can do that, but I mean, you need a way to build your list anyway. That makes sense. But how do you, maybe, one of the, maybe it's just me being a bit weird, but <laughs> how... <laughs> I always worry that you or me will annoy people because I always think about how I would react. And maybe it's because I get a load of emails anyway. I, I get a lot a day. So, and especially now with time being so short, if it's not delivering in the headline, I'm not even opening it. Or mm -hmm. if it's, or if it's somebody that is constantly, because there was one person I, I rue the day that I <laughs> signed up for the thing because it was literally, it felt like it was, it felt like I was being stalked because the inbox was getting probably three or four times a week, and then Facebook Messenger was pinging off all the time, and it was just like. I just have to see the first three letters of the name. It'd be like, ah. <laughs> like Freddy Krueger. Yeah. And the thing is, it's like, it's not as if the person stuff was bad because it wasn't. So, I mean, like the email was always, the emails were good and the messages were good. They were just too much too often and um, too, too pally. Do you know what I mean? And it was just like, no. <laughs> well, well um, I don't know. You might be, I think you're doing something a little dangerous, which is you're, you're sort of projecting what you like onto your prospects. Yeah. And, um, and, and so, so, so like some, so to take it back, you said you don't want to annoy people. Mm. To be honest, uh, my goal is every time I sit down to write an email, I try to annoy people. And I'm only <laughs> saying that's slightly joking because if someone doesn't want if, if they find my email is annoying like i absolutely want them to unsubscribe because i don't want them to to not open my emails which hurts deliverability like i want people on my list who are totally gung-ho on getting my emails often so it's, it's sort of like the 80 20 principle 
Um, if, if you cater to the people who are more likely to unsubscribe, you're catering to the 80% who gives you, you know, the, the 20% of your income. If you, if you cater to the people who want as many emails as possible, those are the 20% that'll give you the 80% of your income. So that's, that's a big part of it. Yeah, so I suppose part of it is knowing what you want to achieve and the best way of doing that, I guess. Also, I suppose it's a bit like, like we're here, with, you know, with GDPR and making sure that whatever they signed up to is what they're getting. And then I suppose part of it is just sort of thinking, if I went to a daily email, I'd have to get all, you know, and in some respects, like, oh, I have to go and get commissions again. And, you know, <laughs> just like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think if you, like, I love writing. Like, I, it's, one of, it's one of my favorite parts of the day is writing my daily email. So for me, it really makes sense. If, like I said, if you don't like it, then, you know, like, I don't think you should force yourself to do it. Like, I know some people love to do video. And so they do a lot of live streams or, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I mean there, there's tons of options, but ju- just to like sort of, to, to bring it back a, a couple steps um, about like, you know, sending too much and stuff. I get feedback from people all the time where they're like, man, I, I really love like your, your newsletter. It really helps me. Like they're not mad that I'm emailing them and they're not mad that I'm selling something to them in every single email. In fact, someone just gave me a testimonial that was something like Tyler will, um, each of Tyler's witty emails will teach you something about life and marketing or something like that. So it's not just like, like I'm not just positioning myself as a copywriter or a marketer. I'm really positioning myself as like a niche unto myself. So it's like I'm selling myself and my relationship with my audience in every single email. And I think that's a big shift in when people actually love, start to like your emails is it's not about the product or the service. It's really about us connecting. And to do that, again, you have to be in their world, which means knowing your prospect. Yeah, so obviously you're a professional as well. So you're doing it right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think, I mean, yeah, like, like I, I've always been a writer and I, I've studied a lot of copywriting, so it is, um, it's a lot easier for me, but really, if you can write an email to your friend, you can write a sales email. It's really just about a, knowing your prospect. So a simple example that I like to use that's a little visceral, so please excuse it, is like, say you were, you know, you had some bad food and you like you were having diarrhea where every five minutes you were running to the bathroom and it was just you know it hurt and it was a mess and it was just terrible and you're just so unhappy and then someone your friend comes along and he starts talking about this herb that cures the exact problem you have you're going to listen to every word he has to say oh. and more you're he's, you're going to take whatever herb he gives you without much of a sales pitch so that's like a very specific example that doesn't necessarily match up to everyone's business but the, the concept is the same that if you understand your pro- your prospects problems and you can speak to those problems and, and show them how to solve them they're going to listen to you and they're going to want to buy what you have to sell yeah and i think that's probably the difference isn't it that uh, most of the emails that i get are either people whose primary job is something else and therefore, then I'm just emailing the list and doing it in a kind of cack handed way, <laughs> or it's the or it's the real professional person that believes that selling is about hitting you on the head with something. Right. But there's not many people like you that who can who, from what you're saying, makes you want to to do your stuff. In fact, you've convinced me because I'm sitting here on your thing, you're just signing up now as we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> to cool. your thing. I've just hit the submit button. So I <laughs> well, that's awesome. So I'll be one. Yeah. So do you want to tell listeners actually about what I've just done then? Sure. Yeah. If, I mean if anyone does want to join my list and uh, they'll get a free copy of my book, Email Emperor, which again just sort of uh, breaks down my very simple uh, copywriting system, they can go to copybymcune.com. That's C O P Y B Y mccune.com and um, enter their information in the box and they'll, they'll unlock my daily email tips. Um, and if they, if they want to go to my website and they don't want to opt in, I do have like past podcast interviews I've been on and um, a lot of, a lot of articles on there too. If they just want to go check out some of the resources. 
Thank you. Because I mean, as I say, you've impressed me already. So I've signed <laughs> up and I have now activated my subscription. <laughs> awesome. Well, and I, actually, uh, I did want to give your, your listeners like a special offer. So if they sign up and they email me um, on the first email or whenever, and they let me know they found me through this podcast, I'll actually give them a, a critique on their emails. So, um, you know, it's quite valuable. It's not something I necessarily do. So I don't know exactly what price to put on it, but you know, it, it, it is quite valuable. Um, just a few small changes can boost their conversion. So that is something I'll, I'll offer to your listeners. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, so what I understand then basically from what you're saying is have something to say. So I know it sounds a bit obvious, but you've kind of, from what, what I'm judging is that you've got a plan so you know who your client, potential client base is and you know what ails them. So you then have a plan of dealing with that that tempts people along the way but gives them content as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, yeah. Like, like what she said about content is um, – and I, I took this from Ben Settle who's like one of the masters of email marketing. He doesn't do client work, but he, he's like really big in the space – and he talks about mixing content with promotion. So a lot of the emails you see are either dry, boring content, like here's how to, I don't know, do your taxes or whatever, or here's how to write an email. And then the other emails you see are just straight sales pitches. Like wow. here I have an offer and really like great copy. And, and this goes back all the way to, you know, sales letters um, that people, they, you know, maybe you've seen them. They're called Magalogs. They look like a magazine, but they're really like a sales pitch. Yeah. And so the whole idea is to make it look valuable, um, to make it look like something people want. And then you, you subtly mix in these sales messages in there. And that's really where the art comes from. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, my, my, like I said, my goal is never to sell the product really. It's to sell the relationship because when you sell the relationship, the products sell themselves. And that's how people like to be sold to, really. And what are you selling? Are you selling copywriting services? Yeah, yeah. So I'm selling mostly email copywriting services. Um, I don't really have too many products right now, although that's something that I, I do want to work on. Actually, and I have no idea if this will be available by the time your listeners hear this, but what I'm launching this week, and so you'll see probably, you're going to see more than daily emails from me this week. I got to warn you, <laughs> uh, but, but I'm actually launching like a retainer service where I write unlimited emails for my client and do any other types of copy they may need. Um, it's, it's not a cheap, it's not going to be cheap. It's, it's, uh, you know, a higher ticket service for people who need a lot of copywritten. But um, yeah, that, that is that is my main offering is email copywriting. Cool, that sounds pretty good. So I think it's probably a good place to end. But before we do that, is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't? Um, no, I, I think uh, that was, I had a really fun conversation. I, I do just want to maybe repeat one really important aspect of this is if you're going to start sending daily emails or whatever you're doing now, in your marketing, just really be sure that you're clear on who you're talking to and you understand their problems, their challenges, their hopes, their fears, their dreams, and, you know, treat them like you would your mom or your grandma or like a, a good friend. And like, how would you sell something to a friend? You know, you wouldn't hit them over the head with all these benefits and, and phony, you know, scarcity tactics. You would really just be like, Hey man, I know you have this problem. This is how I help solve this problem. Like, do you, are you interested in it? So Really, um, I could you know I could talk all day about email copywriting, but everything that you don't know right now can be answered by going to your market. Brilliant, that's fantastic. Would you come back again, maybe in the future, talk about something? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. So, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks, Judith. It was fun. Cool. Thank you once again for tuning into the Maverick Paradox podcast. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my conversation with Tyler as much as I enjoyed having it. If you are pathologically curious and would love to find out more about the Maverick Paradox, then please subscribe to this podcast on one of the popular podcast platforms. Alternatively, you could explore our resources on Mavericks at maverickparadox.com or read the Maverick Paradox magazine. We publish frequently each week. If you subscribe, you will get our monthly newsletter. And let's not forget... My book, The Maverick Paradox, The Secret Power Behind Successful Leaders. For those that love a good discussion, you could apply to join our exclusive Facebook group. And finally, 
If you would like to work with us or just interested in finding out more about the Maverick at work, check out our website, maverickparadox.co.uk. Mm-hmm.